motorcycle is whatever you want to make it. Turn it on, you can give yourself a real thrill. Yeah, this is really rocky back in here. What's going on guys? This is Carl with the Racer Red channel. The story I'm telling today is a very unfortunate one. We uh, had a lot of trouble on the mountain today. I'm riding in Cambridge, Idaho, which is a very treacherous area in Idaho. This mountain just seems to be loose and rocky. So every time you hit a rock out here, you gotta just plan that it's gonna move out from under you. And that makes things very dangerous on side hills. No one cares where I go. Clearing this trail today, all the way to the top. came up in here to uh, clear some spots that were covered yesterday. Brought the saw back in here. My dad came in today. I rode solo yesterday, spent the night. Doing good. About what a rock garden this is. Yeah, this is really rocky back in here. Cameras don't do it justice. All my videos when I'm riding this, it looks like I'm just riding smooth trail. There's a couple deadfall blocking the trail I could clear. As you'll see in this video, it became a matter of survival. And right now there's no stress. They're, we're just enjoying the views. So at this section of the trail, it's a bit further down the mountain and we're just making our climb right now over some roots and rocks. And uh, the trail conditions are really good. The, uh, the air is really good. The conditions are great. The weather and temperatures are great. The trail is a little bit dry, but other than that, uh, the conditions really couldn't be much better. It's uh, one of those days where it's just pretty relaxed. Um, you really don't expect too much to go wrong. We were setting out on this trail to clear a bunch of it. We had cleared uh, five big uh, logs from the trail. Actually, two of those were big logs. Three of them were like branch size logs. But So we decided to just clear this trail all the way to the top pretty much just having a great day and and when you're having a great day like this you kind of forget that this mountain and nature itself is pretty much the enemy I mean you can really get in a situation where suddenly it goes from you're just enjoying the fresh air and the the, the sun and all that stuff and you're just enjoying everything about it well when you get something catastrophic happening all of a sudden you are way out there this terrain becomes more difficult um, depending on your situation how bad your situation is and even if you're 20 miles in or 10 miles in that's a long hike out with broken body parts so um, it makes things very difficult this is just something that we are aware of every time we go out that you know, every time you go out riding, this terrain is just as unforgiving as it is beautiful. I mean, you go out there and, like I said, you enjoy that mountain air and everything, but you also have it in the back of your head that if something does go wrong, that this is way back in here. And uh, this terrain is not forgiving. You fall off the side of it and you could really have issues getting back out. Yeah, I cleared this, this log here um, after I had jumped it. So at this point of the trail, we had gotten up to where we were going to turn around. So it wasn't quite to the top right here, but this is where I took a break and there's no more deadfall to this point. So we were just going to have a quick snack. I was going to fly my drone around. We were going to call it quits for the day. So right here, I'm just following my dad around the little area where I was under the tree right here. I was just taking a break. And my dad came over to me and he said he would just take a ride up the mountain and he would fall off the mountain that way I could get it on camera and uh, he was just joking obviously and I said well don't fall off the mountain but I'll take a video of you it ended up 
exactly like he said, but uh, neither of us wanted it that way, that's for sure. But you can see the conditions. There's lots of greenery. The wildflowers are everywhere. Uh, this is really a beautiful ride. It gives you a great view of uh, the other mountains in the valley. It really doesn't do the trail justice when you're panned out with this view. See lots of paddling and stuff like that. Well, there's lots of rock too. Um, there's lots of rock. It's really loose and dry. The stuff is pretty steep. I know it's going to bring out all of the keyboard professional riders uh, just sitting there with potato chip crumbs all over the front of their shirt saying, oh, he was paddling or he should have kept up momentum or stood up on his pegs. Yes, all that's true, but all of us get fatigued. All of us have gone down at some point. Yeah, it's, it's easy to sit back and keyboard warrior another person's video, but in the end, what would people have really done? You don't know. This video does not show the reality of this trail. And so once you're on a trail like this, and you're bouncing around and you're you're on the edge sometimes you're just on the edge you have to deal with it and get to the end and sometimes we're all over our heads these rocks are are no joke so it's it's really unforgiving like i had said at the beginning this terrain is very very unforgiving you can see the the rock faces here though i'm flying my drone right here Obviously, I'm, I'm looking at him through the drone view, and I saw him lose uh, momentum there. He disappeared out of frame. I scanned down, and once I saw how far he had gone, that's where I had really freaked out because I'm like, wow, he's 30-plus feet down. Um, that That's where it really became scary because that's, that's not just a ledge. That's a cliff. So the level of injuries I was thinking... I didn't really know. Um, I saw that he was injured for sure, but I didn't know at this point how bad the injuries really were. Um, I thought everything from broken bones to pretty much uh, disabled. So I was I was pretty worried. Flew my drone, landed it, uh, hopped on the bike, and just raced up the mountain. <laughs> I was very relieved that once I got up to where he was, where he had crashed, that he was standing up at least. Uh, we would have a lot more hurdles after that. Uh, he was pretty injured. He was bleeding from his nose. He thinks he may have broken his arm, so he couldn't put any pressure. He couldn't squeeze right at all here. with his arm, so he had to try to ride out of there with a hurt arm. So basically, I just rode behind him. That way, I would just follow him anytime he needed to stop. I would be right there anytime he had an obstacle that he needed to go over. We could swap bikes and I could just ride the obstacle. But things were very difficult because with one arm, you're putting all the weight on the other one. Um, it, it really wears you out faster. And so we were dealing with a lot of fatigue. I got it. Um, he was getting very, very fatigued. And going down the mountain was not easy. It took us a lot of the day to get back down. And we weren't that far in. I don't know how many miles, but it's not that far to the top. So it, uh, but in terms of walking distance, it is. It really would have taken a long time to walk out of there. So just a reminder, this, this trip really is just a reminder that it is very dangerous to be back in here with these motorcycles. And 
if something if happens, fall, don't fall off the you cliff. are stuck walking, and if you can't walk, you're done. The main thing is to wear your gear. He didn't have any injuries to his legs because he was wearing motorcycle boots and he was wearing uh, knee protection. And he had no injuries to, the, to his legs. And his helmet protected his head. He had broken goggles. The lenses on his goggles were broken. He smashed into a lot of rocks. And it could have been way worse than it was. If he wasn't wearing a helmet, he would probably be dead. I mean, most certainly he would have been dead. So, yeah. The biggest thing here to take away is to never ride a dirt bike without your gear on. That is the most essential thing you can do. It won't be any issue right now. Now you go in front of me, that way I can help with anything if you have issues. You didn't hit your stomach really hard or anything though? No, actually my head and my arm took the impact. Man, it's, uh, it's important to be prepared up here, that's for sure. Me and my dad are getting out of here after he just took a bale 20 or 30 feet off of a rock cliff. Pretty insane, um, but I find myself kind of low on water now and uh, and food. I have some jerky, but I'm thankful I brought as much water as I did and the jerky because it is hot out here, even though we're not far from the truck right now. It's slow going and it's definitely nice to have that. Things can get dangerous out here pretty quickly. All it takes is one wreck. Let me grab your bike here. They can go from a blissful, relaxed, nice ride to a survival situation. And essentially what we have now is a survival situation. To top it all off, I just looked at my GoPro and the, the mic wasn't plugged in to the GoPro for the last two days. So, sorry about that. I won't have any audio for you guys. So yesterday I went and I went and I went and I just feel like I can go forever but I had a I had one bottle of water I drank it all during the ride yesterday I was flying the drone out in the Sun and like it was just hot hot all day long riding and, and actually doing some pretty technical riding and pushing it by the end of the, of the day I felt a little bit dehydrated so I was like oh, I'm not gonna do the last drone flight I'll just go back to the ambulance and call in the night and that by the ambulance I mean my RV that I converted or my ambulance that I converted anyways so I get back to the ambulance I start to feel like nauseous and um, it gets worse and worse I start to get a headache and uh, for sure I had some heat exhaustion going on yesterday so just drank a lot of fluid tried to stay cool and so today, I drank a lot of fluid. I brought some actual water with me. 
not exactly a trouble-free experience on this one. I've had lots of technical issues. The main drone that I use needed an update, so that really screwed me over. It won't update without Wi-Fi. That was a real disappointment. Then I had to pair my new drone, so I got some, some drone footage. On the way out of here, I was sitting there staring at my helmet on one of our rest breaks, and uh, I realized that the mic wasn't plugged into the GoPro because the GoPro has a special adapter, and so the mic wasn't plugged into that adapter. So I finally plugged that in. So I will have this actual audio, and then the rest is just going to be raw GoPro audio, so apologies. We've taken a lot of breaks coming down the mountain. I'm just thankful that we got off the trail and that we are now on the road and we're going to be back to the camp pretty soon. It's extra exhausting for him to get down the trail because he's got he's only got the use of one arm right now. This area is just not a very good area for just taking it easy and easy day out or whatever. I'm still getting used to the GoPro setup so um, yeah I'll keep improving it and hope you guys come along for the ride. So we're gonna get him back, we're gonna get loaded up and see what we need to do to get home with the, uh, the injuries and stuff. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.